Again, this is Dr. Michael Myers, and I'm course lead faculty for BST 322, Introduction to Biomedical Statistics at National University in San Diego. In this short video, I'm going to go over with you a two-sample t-test. So prior to this, we had one group, and we looked at sample means. For example, we looked at the means of salaries. And now I'm going to give you another example where we're going to look at two groups. Here's a good teaching example that I use. So if we have, again, another t-test example, we're going to try this two-sample t-test. So now we have two means to look at, not just one. So say we have this data here where we have a pilot study looking at uh, cognitive function in Alzheimer's patients, and we've separated those into two groups, and we've measured their functional cognitive score. So we have a group with underwent behavioral therapy and another group of six that underwent medication therapy. So the question here becomes, can we do a two-sample t-test on this data? The first thing we have to realize is, is, is these, these two groups dependent or independent? Well, here they're more than likely independent because we've kept them separate. So we randomly assign them to groups. It's not like we took the same patient, gave them behavioral therapy, and then on the same patient gave them medication. These are two separate groups, and they're independent. They're not paired in any way. Our null hypothesis here, again, is going to be one of nothing or null, and the null here should be that the scores here between the two groups should be equal, right? There should be no difference or a null result between the two. So we're going to go ahead and test that hypothesis. So what we want to do first is get this data, type it into uh, StatCrunch, or we can load it in. So rather than watching, having you watch me type this, I'm going to go ahead and load this in from a spreadsheet that I made of the data. But again, you can just type it in. So to do that again, we can either go to My Computer or the Data tab, and we'll get this file from the computer. And that'll load the data into the spreadsheet for us. Now what we want to do is we want to keep our conventions the same here, right? So we want to have each row in our spreadsheet here be a patient. So that's how I've organized it here, even though in the sample I've kind of, we're going to look at two groups here, behavioral therapy and medication. Really remember this is one variable, the therapy they underwent, whether it was behavioral or medicative, and then the, the cognitive scores are another variable, right? The cognitive function scores here are quantitative, whereas the therapy they underwent, whether it was medication or behavioral therapy, is qualitative, right? So we want to keep those separate in our data table. So here's our therapy. Again, un six underwent behavioral therapy, six underwent some medicative therapy, and these are their functional scores. OK, so how do we do a sam two sample t-test on this? Well, what we can do is we can go to the stat tab and go to our t-statistics. And now we're going to click on two sample with data. And quickly, you'll see that what it wants to do is it'll pick groups for you. So here's our dialog box. And what it'll do is it'll click uh, two samples within columns. Well, we haven't yet put them in our columns yet. We can't select from, for example, the therapy group or the function group, because the groups we want to do are, are these two groups, but they're not in the correct columns yet. So in StatCrunch, what we want to do first is split those into different groups. And that's easily done on the Data tab. So we go to Data, Split Column. And what we want to do is now create two columns, and the columns we want are going to be have our function score, right? If we want to group them by the type of therapy that they underwent. Just click on Create Groups. And now the software is going to create two new columns for us. So it's actually drawn out the two groups that we want to look at here. So again, here, now we've got the behavioral functional group, and we've got the group with the medication. Very similar to what we see in our original data table. Then we can go now, click on Stats, do our test, T-Statistics. Again, we're going to do two sample with data. And now we've got our groups already set up for us. So we're going to test the one column, which is the Behavioral Functional Score Group. And the second group is going to be our Medication Function Score Group. 
Here we'll leave pool variances clicked because we're going to assume that the variances are equal here. I mean, we could do our descriptive statistics like we did the first week and go through those, but we're going to just assume those are going to be the same for now. The variances are fairly equal, so we'll leave pool variances checked. We'll click on Next. Again, our hypothesis test here we said was that the mean difference between the two groups should be zero, right? There should be no relationship, so we're going to make that the difference should be equal to zero. Then we click Next. We can store the output in the table so it'll calculate the t-statistic for us and we'll put that in the table. Then we click Calculate and then the software has done all the work for us. So again if we go over and look at our table it's doing the difference between the means here. So it's giving you this sample means for difference between the two groups as it calculated the means in each group. It did the t-test for us. So again, here's our 10 degrees of freedom. Here it's 12 patients minus 2 because we did a two-sample t-test. Here's the, the t-statistic and the p-value. So again, as we look at the p-value, it's 0 0.08. That's greater than 0 0.05. So it looks like we have a lot of chance in here this is probably not a significant result, right, because it's above 0.05. We can also look at this test statistic. We can look it up in the back of the book to see what the critical value would be for this test statistic with this type of data. And we'll probably see that the t value is going to be, critical value would be higher than 1.938. So this result would be not significant. So again, this is a very easy way to get StatCrunch to do a two sample t test for you and print out the probability value, the p-value, and the test statistic.